I'm Alex, and this is Marty McCoy of Boatflex. Hi. How do you guys come up with the ideas for your songs? Um, everybody in the band writes, so all the all the songs are true stories. It's either something that's happened to us or happened to somebody that's really close to us or something that's important to us. But everybody writes in the band, so things just come out so fast. If you don't throw your idea out quick, you will get lost in the wash. So I mean, it's kind of it's it's not stress. It's a lot of fun, but it's it's fast paced moving kind of writing style. It's like go go go. He's got this. He's got this. Oh my God, he's already got this song done. I better you know get in the room and you put my piece on it, or I'll be left in the dust. <laughs> so it's it's a lot of fun. It's just it moves really really fast. Weirdest rumor you've heard about yourself? Big old banana dick. <laughs> That's I heard about that about myself. That's not true. <laughs> but I was one that got around. I wasn't going to ask it, but I wanted to. How do you guys deal with being on the road for so long? Uh, alcohol helps. <laughs> we we just bought this. Um, I, I don't know, probably probably a year now. Um, it was a lot harder in the van. A lot harder in the van. But that's all we were used to, and, and you know we, we enjoy playing, and we all get along really well. Like there's never we never fight. I mean, like once every five years, maybe someone gets drunk and says, you're an asshole, no, you're an asshole. That's about it. So we get along really well, and um, video games help. The bunks, we built bunks in the back of this thing. That helps. Anytime you're tired or, or uh, you know, not feeling it, you just go back to your bunk, curl up, get to sleep, <laughs> wake up in the next town. Do you but guys so, take turns driving? No, we hire a driver. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, right. Things have changed since the last tractor. <laughs> We used to drive, do everything ourselves, and now we got a driver, tour manager, crew, all that stuff. So the roads have become a lot more easy um, when we can just do nothing and go play a show. You know what I mean? We used to have to do everything. Now we're just like, fix our hair, and oh, maybe I'll make some, some cheese sandwiches or something. Do nothing and hang out all day, do interviews and, and, and phone interviews and go play on the radio. And, and it's we're princesses now. It's amazing. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I bet it makes everything a lot easier. Oh my god. Does it make the show better? Way better. Way better. When you're rested up and that's all you're you're all day you're just, you know, resting up and concentrating on that, that hour and a half, two hours of just exploding through the roof on on stage. It's definitely made definitely made the shows a lot better. Okay. I've had this question for a while. Do you guys prefer the digital album or the physical album? Uh, I'm an album guy. Like I I mean I have iTunes on my phone and I just never use it. It's like I, I use YouTube a lot with these speakers right here. We have yeah. every night we get wasted. Not every night. Uh, <laughs> we pick and choose our battles, but we come in here and everybody plays the, the records on the speakers, and we all go and like rotation. It's like, all right, it's your turn. Play your heart. What's, what's in your heart right now? <laughs> Play all these crazy songs. And um, but I'm I'm a record guy. I like getting the album, and I, I just don't think that. I mean, unless you have a sweet set of speakers at your house, that's, I, I've seen people listening to songs just on their phone in their car. I'm like, man, that sounds, it's so small and tiny, and I, I'm, I have to hear things really, really loud, and, and where people can't talk to me when I'm listening to music, I have to listen to it so loud. I'm, I'm, I'm the exact guy. same way. Yeah. She gets annoyed with me, she's too. Turn around. No way. She's switching on her phone, she's like, here, listen to this, and she hands me her phone, I'm like, Seriously, you want me to listen to it on that? Right. That's I'm a headphones guy. Or... I always have my headphones in walking around campus. And... The little tiny ones, I don't understand those either because there's no bottom end to them. So I, I like have the big 80s headphones, the slamming bass. <laughs> I gotta have it loud. Those are hard to carry around when you're walking around on campus. Do the, do the cool kid where they're under your neck. Rock the 80s look. Be proud. The 80s oh. look is coming back. I hope so. Anyway. <laughs> I think it is. If you, if you put your head down, you work hard, you get to a lot of stuff. Is that the advice that you give to upcoming bands? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, don't practice once or twice a day or once or twice a week and, and fight with your girlfriend if you if you want to compete with the real bands. It's like get your head down, practice eight, eight, ten hours a day together. And, and you know, I mean, there's really good bands out there, and the ones that rise at the top are the good ones. So, I mean, anybody can run around saying, I'm in a band, I'm in a band, and, and I see it all the time. The horrible bands out playing gigs and you know everyone's the music scene's dying the music scene's dying it's like it's not dying there's a really good music scene out there you're just not a part of it because you don't practice <laughs> and you don't own a tuning pedal buy a tuning pedal learn to sing <laughs> practice together okay first song you learned to play uh top dirty to be my poison Woo. <laughs> my brother was learning it he had a guitar teacher upstairs teaching it to him and i was downstairs because I wasn't allowed in the session because I was the younger one or whatever. I remember him learning upstairs and I was learning it downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> 
bass guitar teacher. <laughs> First album you ever purchased? Uh, Mr. Mister. Okay. Or no, Mr. Mister or the Miami Vice soundtrack. It's up in the air. Sean bought one, I bought the other. I can't quite remember. It's a tie. Yeah. It's tough. But the Miami Vice soundtrack is awesome. <laughs> I will listen to it when I get home. All right. <laughs> Just because you told me to. All right, okay. Um, best concert you've ever been to? Uh, System of a Down, probably. It was the best sounding concert I've ever been to. Um, went and saw them and uh, the Mars Volta. I don't know, I've been to tons of concerts. I remember seeing the Moody Blues and they were amazing. Never got to see Pink Floyd. Uh, but I remember going to System of a Down and, and they were, the sound was so amazing. I was like, how did that even happen? And like even the notes that I thought that, you know, this is gonna be really hard for, you know, Circus to hit or, or and, and they would go like even crazier on these notes. And they would hit, like go even farther and higher on these notes and all of a sudden it was just, the best, you know, as far as the sound man went, he should have been given a medal. Oh God, it was amazing. It was in a huge, huge stadium too. And, and it just sounded like the CD was playing. And I know it wasn't the CD because things changed and, and they, were, they did all kind of wild stuff and you could feel it, you know, really move like with the audience and stuff. It was just phenomenal. Weirdest thing you've ever been asked to sign? I get asked to sign stuff all the time. It doesn't seem so weird anymore. Um, I do want to be a sinus dentures once. Really? You want me to put them in my mouth? And sign. Please tell me you didn't put them in your mouth. No, no, no. You no. <laughs> have had too much to drink, sir. Biggest pet peeve of the rock genre that you have? Everybody crying about their feelings all the time. It's like rock and roll used to be about kicking ass and big titties and, and fast cars. And, and now I don't know what happened. <laughs> so it's time to bring it back. Final question, do you have a pre-show ritual? Uh, yeah, line up about four shots of Jaeger, um, pour the Red Bull in, and they're like, okay, you got 10 minutes, and bam, 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 bam. And then that's when I start to kind of like feel loose and, and alive. Because if not, I get like, if not, I get real nervous. Like, oh, oh, I'm gonna puke. I get nervous before every show, but if there's Jaeger, which there is some in the fridge, that's one of the bottles, like on the rider, has to yeah. be here, has to. Or I'll throw it deep into it. <laughs> we yell at my tour manager, where is it? So I have to have that, but it, it just, just the right amount calms me down. It can go, it can backfire. It can, it's, I've had a couple shows where I was like, I'm, I'm too shithouse to be up here. But I've, I've got the formula down. So yeah, we, we sit around and tell a bunch of jokes and, and drink about four or five shots together and hit the stage. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good little ritual. It keeps us all sane. Fantastic ritual, and it's definitely a shot of rock. <laughs> Um, well, thank you for talking to me. Thank you. I very much appreciate it. Thanks so much.